Hi, someone sent me a dwarf rulia, and today we're gonna plant it. This rulia is a dwarf rulia, and it only grows about 12 inches tall, and it's not going to grow so aggressive that it's going to take over your yard. Now, all I'm doing is breaking up the roots at the bottom and gently opening them so they're going to spread out and fill up the pot. And now I'm going to water it. Remember to be positive so that we can find solutions. Remember to be positive so that we don't let our stresses take over and turn into anxiety. Negative thinking is something like, we won't get through this at all. But thinking positive says, we will get through this if we work together. It's always a pleasure to find worms in the soil as I work. Helping to increase the amount of air and water in my beds, the worms break down organic matter, like dead leaves and grass, into nutrients for my plant. They are hidden, tireless workers helping make my garden beautiful. They are also perfect examples of nature's helpers. We need all the helpers when it comes to our environment. Worms, birds, bees, all play a critical role in our environment. As I remove my second oleander tree stump, hidden by the expanding rulia, I'm reminded, we as human beings share this space with each other and many other living creatures, many of which, like my worm pals, are doing their best to survive. Just like the plants depend on worms to help the roots, bees to collect the pollen and birds to collect the dead leaves and stems and build structures, we depend on each other to maintenance our homes, strengthen our communities, and better our environment. Hi, if you're looking for a new plant that has some medicinal benefits as well as some textural benefits, I suggest aloe. Here are three reasons why. Number one, it's a great succulent that produces a lot of itself and those can be replanted to create even more. Number two, it's a great topical treatment for burns, wounds, and irritated skin. Number three, some varieties can be ingested and used for digestive health. If you're looking for a new plant that can go in a pot or in the ground, I recommend elephant ears. Here are four reasons why it's awesome. Number one, it grows so tall, it allows for height to any basket or any place you put it in the ground. Number two, it's really hardy and it will survive a frost. Number three, it produces a lot of itself and each one of those little guys can be broken off and replanted to create more. Number four, it's beautiful. Thank you to all my friends and family who have helped make my garden awesome. Once the task begun, never leave it till it's done. Be a labor great or small, do it well or not at all. Wise words, Grandma. They really helped me. Thank you. Hi. Today we're going to cut an onion. We're also going to plant it. Did you know that after you've cut it flat, it starts to grow. Planter, soil, and your onion. Dig out just a little bit of the center and then add your onion. Sprinkle a little soil on top and add some water. One of the hardiest plants I have in my garden are cannibal. This cannibal I pulled out of the ground several weeks ago and just sat it on top of the ground and it's been growing ever since. Cannabulb is really hardy. Not only did it survive the frost, but each one of these can be broken off to create more plants and it's just that simple. If you're looking for a strong plant that's just going to keep on growing, I totally suggest cannabulb. Hi, today we're going to talk about cloth planters. Cloth planters are awesome for a few reasons. Reason one, they are really durable. Reason two, they are very porous and they are great for drainage. Reason three, they make transport really easy. 
Number four, because the planter is malleable, it's easy to break up the roots when you want to move the plant around. And lastly, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Be sure to pull up your plants and look at the roots. Address the problems at the source versus just looking at what's on top. Just like plants, if we want to maximize our potential, we need to stop and look at our roots every now and then. Good roots. I just showed you how to water some bromeliads. There are lots of different types of bromeliads, but they all have something in common. They house water in the center of the plant. The water in the center helps many of the bromeliads adapt to multiple climates. That water also provides nutrients for the insects and the animals in the area. Weeds grow out of nowhere and can take up valuable space in your garden. Weeds can grow out quickly and have to be addressed with intent. Just like weeds, bad thoughts and negativity can take up valuable space in your mind. Be sure to remove those thoughts so that you can maximize your potential. This is the rulia that I removed a few weeks ago. This is the rulia that has started to grow back. This reminds me that sometimes problems can come back. And just because we think that we've addressed it doesn't mean that it's not there below the surface lurking. So it's important we take the extra time to dig below the surface, find the roots, to keep the problems from growing back. Tool versus vice is a dichotomy we use at Choice Forward to help us streamline our discipline. What does this phone and this fertilizer have in common? They are both tools. Both tools are eligible to become vices. What do I mean by that? If I use the phone too much, I'm likely to hurt my mind. If I give the fertilizer to the plant too often, I'm likely to kill the roots. So let's be conscious of how we are using our tools. Hi guys, this is my farm stand from Lettuce Grow. And it's a hydroponic unit that allows me to grow herbs, vegetables, and leafy greens. These have all been growing for about three weeks and I'm gonna show you the weekly maintenance that I have to do. This tank is the water that is recycled in the unit. So I have to add water every week because the water evaporates and the plants are using the water in their roots. You also have to add a weekly nutrient. Now I turn it on to let the nutrients filter through the system and I will check the pH balance. With summer in full swing, planning out my chores has been essential to success. One chore that requires routine maintenance is my compost. Oftentimes, this chore is stinky and sticky work. I try to do my compost in the later part of the afternoon to avoid blaring heat. After taking the scraps from this week's cooking and putting them in the small compost, churning for a bit, I move to the large compost pile. My chores are an important part of my routine in my garden. All the maintenance I do for my chores helps me sustain progress and maintain a healthy environment. An environment shared by my plants, all the birds, bees, and animals that live here too. We all benefit from the work that I do to better our home. Pothos, also pronounced photos, is one of my favorite plants. I've propagated photos more than 10 times. Photos are not only beautiful vines that are easy to propagate, but photos are also a natural way to clean the air. In a clean air study done by NASA, photos was found to be adept at removing volatile organic compounds from the surrounding air. The VOCs included pollutants like benzene, toluene, formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, and more. As we progress in our world today, establishing meaningful relationships is important. 
Those relationships set us up for success. When those relationships are beneficial to both sides, we call it symbiotic. Photos remind me that having a beautiful plant helps my aesthetic, which is beneficial to my eyes. But having a plant that is working to better my environment is beneficial to my well-being.